going to show you some of the texture tools that you can use with oil and cold wax and this is by no means an exhaustive survey. These are just some of the things that I have handy. This already has some texture marks on it. But let's try a few things and see what happens with them. One of my favorites is the kind of coffee sleeve that has the ridges. Let's put some more paint on this piece. So I can put this into the paint. I can turn it in different directions. And then once I have the paint on the copy sleeve, I can use it as a stamp in a darker area. So as you build up your layers, there are just so many fun texture tools to use. This one has raised dots on it. I think it's um, made to uh, put in your drawers so that your drawer dividers don't move around a lot. That could be what it is. Let's get some more paint so you can see that more clearly. There. That's pretty raised, so it's going to take a little while to dry, but it's great texture, and even if I cover this area completely over with other layers, once those are dry, they're going to stay in your piece and continue to add texture to it. I like to use combs. With this one, I use the large edge. It makes some really interesting marks whether you use it as an additive with paint on it, you're adding it to what you already have, or whether you use it to subtract down to a previous layer. Let's use some pigment stick to get a dark area here, and then use the comb so you can really see what it does. This is um, definitely, this is something you could open a jar with, or maybe again, you would put it in one of your drawers. Let's just see what happens if we kind of squash it in. Yeah, you get these little dots here. And you can bring some of those over here. Like that. I don't know what this is. This is a, and you got, curvy lines on it, so it's really nice. It can go either direction, vertical or horizontal. This is a meat thermometer, or it was once. Let's see if it, oh, I have enough paint on here to use it. Yeah, I'm getting some subtle circles going here. And I use it on this dark area maybe. This works better the more layers you have and the drier some of them are, but you can get your circles going with the meat thermometer. Here is a catalyst, one of the catalyst wedge tools that has a jagged edge. And this can be really nice for giving you visual texture and a little subtle physical texture. Here's another Home thing. And this is making striations in the paint that I just put down. So you can see from what's happening to this painting that you don't necessarily want to use all these at once. But you can use them all eventually, or the ones that you like best, in different areas. I'm going to take some of the texturing out because it's going to be impossible to really see what we're doing. And that's another nice thing that I love about oil and cold wax is that it does stay wet long enough to add and subtract as much as you want. Putting some of the pigment stick on it, which is very nice and 
oily. Yeah, that makes a great mark. Okay. You have your pottery loop tool. Maybe this comes more under the category of marks than texture, but you can use it to go back to previous layers. I have this little broom. This broom is a fireplace broom. And this is going to kind of give you different texture. There's a lot of kinds of brooms or brushes you can use. This is a faux finish brush, quite encrusted with paint. Put a lot of texture even into a very plain area so that when you, as you add your layers, you get more and more texture. So one thing I'll just say parenthetically as we work on this, I'm, I'm showing you techniques, but as you can see right now, this is not a very attractive piece. And if you want to get a lot of texture, it may be that at some point your piece is not going to be attractive. But if you let it dry, You've got some great stuff to scrape back to, and you've got all this texture happening. Here's another texture tool. This is a lace doily, just what you would find at a grocery store. And I'm going to use it as a stencil. And I'm also going to use this purchase stencil. This stencil is from pencil girl. And I'm putting some pigment stick down and let's put some paint in it. You can mix the pigment sticks with paint. Ah, so that is interesting. I like it because it doesn't look just like the doily. But it does give interesting marks. Try some paint on the doily. Yeah, get some more of those marks. And I just take away what I don't want. Okay, let's try this purchase stencil. I'm going to try some of this giant pigment stick. Again, this is going to take a while to dry. So I can take away what I don't want there, see what's underneath with my powdery scraper and still have some marks there and also again use it as a stamp. So I like that too. So I'm going to let those dry there and add some more. And they're going to add a little bit of raised texture, but they also are going to add a lot of visual texture that it will be fun to come back to.